All right, let's talk about Jeremy Ruckert, who's a very fascinating player. There's some people who really like him. He's the tight end out of uh, Ohio State who got drafted by the Jets. Uh, and I'm not one of those who loves him the way some people do, but I do like him. In fact, I did an exercise where I kind of I started a team from scratch, uh, and then I, uh, you know, had to do you know free agency, and I did a draft, and I drafted him with pick 109 in my mock draft scenario. He went here at 101, so uh, right around when I said I would draft him is when he actually got drafted, and I think it makes sense. I think he's someone who is a talented player. Uh, there's a lot to like about him. There's a lot of unknowns about him. So let's get into the film and kind of talk about what are the good about him, what are the question marks, and how good of a player can he be in New York. So like, let's start off with a play like this. This is a lot of what he will do in, okay, I said in New York, I guess technically in New Jersey, but you know what I mean. Uh, you know, what he will be able to do with the Jets is just kind of run decent setup routes. This is what... Oh, Pretty much what Ohio State asked him to do in the passing game, which when he were were to run routes, it would just be these setup routes, which is kind of unfortunate because I would have liked to see him do more. Just, I would have liked to see him get more opportunities. The way this play works is it is zone coverage. You have the two receivers who are lined up to the offense's left who are going to be running deeper routes, and Rucker just is supposed to sit underneath the zone and coverage. This is not a difficult play by for Ruckert to pull off by any means. It's actually something you expect your tight end to be able to pull off. And as you see, Ruckert is going to be able to just, you know, uh, do a fine job at getting to where he had to be. The ball went somewhere else. This is a lot of what the Ohio State offense asked of him was just this stuff. So it's kind of like, okay, yeah, fine. You did your job. I'm not going to be mad at you or anything like that. But you would have also kind of liked to see just him, you know, get more opportunities to do things, I think it's fair to say. Because like heading over to something like this, you did see scenarios where like he was able to look pretty good in the receiving game at times, especially in 2020 as opposed to 2021, uh, which, you know, uh, th that's still t something on his tape, although you would have rather it had been last year as opposed to two years ago, I think it's fair to say. He was certainly better in 2020 than in 2021. But regardless, so this is going to be zone coverage. You have uh, one tight end who's going to be running a deeper route and then you have Ruckert himself, who's going to start to run deep, but then get over the middle. Look at how right when this play begins, what you notice is that this play is working. You know, his teammate did a very good job at drawing the extra attention. So this over the middle area of the field is going to be open. As you see, when Rucker gets over the middle, he is able to just get wide open and makes the catch. It was well well designed. All of that stuff is good, but this also kind of, to me, shows he does have all the physical tools to be a good tight end as well. So the physical tools is good. Now let's go over to something like this. One thing that's talked about with his blocking, uh, talked about with him, is his blocking. And his blocking at times is awesome. This is an example where I've circled him on the field. Watch what happens. So look, it's going to be a screen pass to someone else. Rucker gets up and goes to block someone at the second level. Gets the hand placement he wants and watch what he's going to do. As you see, he just completely moves him out of the way. And he could do this to even defensive linemen at times. When he gets the hand placement he wants and gets the positioning he wants, he is absolutely a good blocker. But you notice I say when he gets the positioning he wants because he doesn't always do that. Like, look, this is one example where you see where he is on the field. You see the guy who he's supposed to block. Watch what happens. As you see, he tries to get to the outside, not realizing that, you know, uh, he kind of overran that one a little bit, allowing the defender to potentially get to the inside and make a tackle. Didn't actually end up working out that way, but still a miss by Rucker. There's no denying that. It just, it got, you know, the halfback got tackled before it ended up mattering. But, you know, this is something that I noticed a little bit. Like here, this one's another one where, again, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block right there and watch what happens. As you see, I mean, it's just a, a whiff on a block. That's exactly what happens. So this happened. This was on tape. You would see him miss these blocks from time to time. I don't think it's a huge deal, but it is something that I noticed. It is interesting because part of me is wondering, okay, the Jets must really want some tight ends, right? I mean, you have CJ Uzama uh, here, uh, or Uzama, I believe is how you say it. I'm never going to get that name down. Uh, who, you know, he was from Cincinnati. They signed him, uh, who should be an effective player for them. And they also got Tyler Conklin uh, as well. So he's someone who could be solid. Maybe the idea with Ruckert is he could be more of a blocking tight end who maybe you hope could be a receiver and could develop some of those traits. 
Uh, he's not a route runner. He just he does not run routes. That, that's just not something in his game. Uh, maybe you can teach him how to do it, and that could make his skill set better. He's not overly explosive either. He really is someone who, I feel like for the most part, uh, when we saw him get wins was just kind of, you know, sitting in gaps and coverage. But my question really is, how much of that was simply just by you know, product of the Ohio State offense as a whole. And that's why there's just, there's a big question mark with Rucker. I see the upside. I see why some people really like this guy because there certainly is, you know, stuff on tape that makes you say, man, this guy has a lot of the traits you want in a player. So if you're someone who likes to draft for traits, which maybe the Jets are to some degree, I mean, you know, uh, Sauce Gardner is definitely a traits guy. I think that Jermaine Johnson is certainly a traits guy. Johnson didn't have a ton of uh, production in terms of like pass rush and stuff like that, but had a lot of has a lot of good physical tools that you like. Sauce Gardner also had production, so uh, you know he was just a great prospect as a whole. But uh, Ruckert, another guy who is certainly a, a bit of a traitsy guy, uh, and then Garrett Wilson has traits and production as well. So out of the big name guys, uh, it, it does seem like there's a, you know, it, that's at least something they care about, clearly is traits, but, uh, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world to do with a pick 101 is go after a guy who you feel like has a pretty high ceiling. Uh, yes, you know, you would, I'd obviously love to have someone who not only has all these traits, but also has proven that they can, you know, do this stuff, you know, in college. But the thing is, if that guy existed, then he would have been drafted well before you were able to get him uh, here with this pick. So you're, you know, you have the, that pick. How do you maximize that pick? Well, it could be taking a chance on someone who might end up being a second round talent if they can get it all together. Now, again, there is still a risk factor. We don't know if he's going to get some of this stuff together, but I do find it fascinating. He is someone who I would say is one of the guys who, uh, you know, I think this is a good pick, I guess is what I'll say. Regardless of whether it works out or not, I think this is a good pick. It seems like worst case scenario. You got a good uh, blocking tight end, which might not be the number one thing you look for, uh, you know, especially with, you know, uh, a, you know, not a top 100 pick, but the best pick that is in top 100 at 101, maybe not the number one thing you want to spend a third round pick on. But again, not all third round picks are equal. This is the late third round pick. And I also think that for someone like him, that's his floor. His ceiling is much higher than that. So that's why I think I, I like this pick and why I like this move. So the Jets had a very interesting draft. They got a ton of big names. Ruckert is one of those big names. He was someone that got a lot of buzz uh, heading into this. And I think it's a good pick. I, I like it. So that's what I think. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts on Jeremy Ruckert to the New York Jets? Do you think he'll get playing time? Because that's a legitimate thing. What if he's, you know, is he a third tight end? Which you'll still get some playing time, but how much playing time? That's another fascinating aspect of all of this. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.